Earlier, I mentioned that when hieroglyphs are used as phonograms, signs that represent sounds, they could represent a sound or a combination of sounds. In fact, each Egyptian hieroglyph, when used as a phonogram, belongs to one of three categories. Signs that represent a single consonant, signs that represent two consonants, or signs that represent three consonants. Remember, in hieroglyphs, only consonants are written. The vowels are left out, and unfortunately, we know very little about how they sounded. Today, we're going to learn the one consonant signs. These are sometimes called uniliteral signs, or monoconsonantal signs, or alphabetic hieroglyphs. In the case of the monoconsonantal signs, each one corresponds to a single consonant sound. Hieroglyphs used as phonograms, signs that represent sounds, get their sound values from the words they represent when used as logograms signs that represent words. We call this the rebus principle. The most famous illustration of the rebus principle in English is writing the word belief with a picture of a bee and a picture of a leaf. The ancient Egyptian word for mouth includes the consonant R. We don't know what the vowel sound would have been, of course, but when we pronounce it today, we say ra or ro. For this reason, the hieroglyphic sign showing a mouth is used to represent the consonant R in words like rem, fish. As we learn each of the one consonant signs, I'll put up an image that gives some information about it. First, I'll give the sign itself, and then the transliteration character that represents it. Next, in parentheses, I'll put the name of the sign, what we call it when we talk about it. Below, I'll include a photograph, a picture, or a description of the thing that the sign represents. One of the most wonderful things about learning hieroglyphs is that we get a glimpse into the sites that the ancient Egyptians saw in their world around them. Finally, at the bottom, I'll give an indication of how we pronounce that sign today. Let's start at the beginning with the sign that we call Aleph. It represents an Egyptian vulture. We pronounce it like the A in our word father, Ah, this may seem strange to you because I've just told you more than once that hieroglyphs don't represent vowels, only consonants. Well, in this case, we pronounce it ah, but it originally was probably what we would call a uvular trill, something like the way the French pronounce the letter R. It then became a glottal stop, basically a pause in breathing between two syllables. At least for now, though, you don't really need to worry about how the sign was originally pronounced. It works very well just to pronounce it ah, and think of it as an aleph. The next sign in the list of single consonant hieroglyphs is called yod. It's a leaf of the kind of reeds that line the banks of the Nile. This is another one of those signs that we usually pronounce as a vowel, even though it was originally probably a semi-vowel. We say e as in beat, even though it was more like a y sound. If it's followed by an aleph, reed leaf vulture, we pronounce it as a y. Reed leaf vulture gives us the sound ya. We now come to the first of our sounds that are found in Arabic, but not in English. This sign, which represents a human forearm, we call ein. The sound ein is described by linguists and experts in phonology as a voiced pharyngeal fricative which simply describes where in your vocal tract it's pronounced and how. It's notoriously difficult for people who are not native speakers of Arabic to pronounce this sound. I'm sure I'm not doing it justice, and so I'm including links here to places where you can hear native speakers pronounce it. It's made by constricting the muscles of your throat, almost as though you've opened your mouth for the doctor and he's put a tongue depressor down your throat and asked you to say ah. At any rate, we usually end up pronouncing it very much the same way we pronounce the aleph, just as the a in father. Next, we come to the third of our semivowels, that is, sounds that are actually consonants, but that we pronounce today as vowels. In this case, it's the quail chick hieroglyph, one of the cuter hieroglyphs in my opinion, which we call wow. It's probably more like a w, 
but we pronounce it like the oo in food. This is another one of those glyphs that turns the reed leaf, yod, into a y. A yod and then a wow, a reed leaf and then a quail chick, is pronounced you. You'll see this combination a lot in Middle Egyptian. Our next single consonant hieroglyph is much more straightforward. It's simply the letter B, as in book, and it's represented by a depiction of a human foot. Our next hieroglyph is pronounced P, as in pip. It originally represented a stool or cushion made out of reed matting. Sometimes the interior details are filled in and it's a little easier to see what it represents. Other times, it's simply an empty rectangle. For this next glyph, I'm going to start off with a warning. I know people who are so terrified of snakes that even the sight of a photograph of one is enough to make them uncomfortable. If you really don't like snakes, you might want to look away for the next little bit. This hieroglyph is pronounced F, as in food, which if you haven't guessed is one of my favorite things. It represents a horned viper of the type that can be found in the deserts of Egypt. The ancient Egyptians were acutely aware of the dangers posed by poisonous snakes, and the hieroglyph representing a horned viper is a good example of a phenomenon that we sometimes see in Egyptian writing. Hieroglyphs, like any images, were thought by the ancient Egyptians to be almost alive with a kind of magical energy. The horned viper was sometimes written with the head separate from the body in an effort to reduce the dangers that merely being in its presence could pose. Our next hieroglyph is one of my personal favorites. It depicts an owl and represents the sound M, as in Maggie. Our next hieroglyph, a horizontal zigzag line, represents ripples in water. It's pronounced N, as in Nile. Next, we come back to the sound R, as in river, represented by a depiction of a human mouth. This next sign, H, as in hat, we think is a depiction of a simple reed hut of the kind that farmers, even today, will sometimes put up in their fields so that they can take shelter on breaks from their farm work. The ancient Egyptian language actually had four sounds that are similar to our H. They're represented in transliteration by the Roman letter H with different marks below it. This one we call the dotted H. It's a voiceless pharyngeal fricative, pronounced like the Arabic letter H. I tend to think of it as an H with heavy breathing. Again, the best way to understand this sound is to hear a native speaker of Arabic pronounce it, and so I provide you a couple of links where you can do just that. The next H-like sound we simply call third H. It's a sound that's found in Arabic, but also in other languages. It's pronounced like the CH in the Scottish word loch. Once again, I'm including links so that you can hear it pronounced correctly. We don't actually know what the hieroglyph third H depicts. Sometimes people describe it as a placenta, the organ in a woman's body that nourishes an unborn child. I'm not sure though how strong the evidence is for this. Our final H-like sound is not found in Arabic, but it is found in German. It's pronounced the same way as the CH in ich. I'm including a link here to a video where you can hear it pronounced and to one where you can hear this one differentiated from the other CH pronounced ch. Next is a letter that is sometimes transliterated as S. We call it the bolt S, and it's actually pronounced like our letter Z, as in zoo. It represents a bolt used to fasten a door. Our next hieroglyph is S, as in Sunday. It represents a folded piece of cloth. After S, we have the sign that we refer to as shin. It's pronounced sh, as in sheep, and it represents a rectangular lake or pool of water, man-made, of the kind that was found in Egyptian temples and gardens. Then, we have the hieroglyph that we call kof. It's represented in the traditional system of transliteration 
as a K with a dot underneath it in the European system of transliteration, which is actually a little bit different. It's represented as the letter Q. It's pronounced like the Arabic letter Kaf, and I've included links here so that you can hear it pronounced correctly. The Kaf is a depiction of a hill, like the kind you see here in the Valley of the Kings. Next, we have the hieroglyph that's pronounced K, as in king, and simply depicts a basket with a hand. Next, we have the hieroglyph that's pronounced G, as in good. It shows a circular stand of a kind that was usually made of pottery or faience and was used to hold up jars that had tapered bottoms and couldn't stand on their own. We're starting to get close to the end. Our next hieroglyph is pronounced T, as in toast, and represents a loaf of bread with a flat bottom and a rounded top. After the bread loaf T, which is one of the most common of the single consonant hieroglyphs, comes the second T, which is written in transliteration as a T with a line underneath it. It represents the sound CH, as in itch. The hieroglyphic sign represents a hobble, or fetter, of the kind used to bind the legs of animals. I'm sorry if the photograph bothers you. A lot of people think that hobble training is cruel, but it is a common practice, and this is the best depiction I could find of what the sign represents. Second to last in our list of single consonant hieroglyphs is the sign that's pronounced D, as in delta. It's pretty obvious that it represents a human hand, but I've put a picture of my own hand in here, just for consistency's sake. Last, but certainly not least, we come to one of the prettiest single consonant hieroglyphs in my opinion. Although, again, if you're afraid of snakes, you might want to look away for the next little bit. We call this sign the second D, and it's represented in transliteration as a letter D with a line underneath it. We pronounce it like our letter J, as in jump. The sign, of course, depicts the famous Egyptian cobra. Well, there you have it our list of 24 single consonant hieroglyphic signs. Sometimes people give the number of single consonant hieroglyphic signs as 25. In those cases, they're counting a doubled version of the reed leaf sign, yod. The double reed leaf, which can also be written as a pair of slanting strokes, is so similar to the regular yod, pronounced e or y, that I just left it out. It's transliterated with the letter y or with two of the yod signs that we use in the traditional system of transliteration. We still have a lot to talk about. We need to learn how you know which direction to read hieroglyphs in and how you arrange them to form words. We also need to start learning the signs that include two or three consonant sounds. For now though, I think we have enough to work on. Practice your transliteration alphabet, learning it in the correct order. Learn the single consonant hieroglyphic signs and practice drawing them. Let me know in the comments section if you have any questions or if you think I'm moving at too quick a pace or too slow. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you again soon in our next video. Thanks so much for watching.